Hello YouTube. Today we are going to go over mixture of experts, which is a very interesting machine learning concept. Make sure you watch this video till the end because uh, this concept is quite legendary in machine learning and has inspired a lot of offshoots and derivatives. So this is one of those ideas at least which you should be able to understand and synthesize very easily because it will help you a lot in your machine learning uh, pipelines. So let's get into the background a little bit. So here are some things that we do know about machine learning models. And if you're watching this video, you should know by now. One is that different machine learning models are built with different kinds of assumptions and, you know, architectures, etc. This means that they're definitely made to handle different kinds of tasks or kinds of data very well. Like just within neural networks, if you use a CNN, convolutional neural network, you might have, it'll be better for images because it can, it has inbuilt uh, feature extraction and analysis. While an RNN is, uh, has been shown to work better for uh, time-based data. So, you know, different kinds of assumptions, different kinds of uh, architectures will lead to different uh, performance improvements in different kinds of data. So, when we try to apply this to real life, however, when we're trying to build an entire pipeline from scratch, what you will realize is that a lot of your data sources are complex, either because they have a lot of noise, missingness, etc., or that they just come from a lot of different sources. For example, when I was working with Johns Hopkins, the state level data wasn't one data set. It was actually aggregated data from a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, surveys, um, analysis, government reports, NGO reports, and they were all built, to, they were all combined together in various ways. And this uh, might mean that you have different kinds of data distributions, different kinds of natures. Remember, since there's a lot of uh, human interaction, this might there might be a lot of error involved. So generally, you will, you will need much bigger, more complex models to work well. But complex models are also very expensive. Since, you know, every one parameter you add, it, it increases your search space exponentially. Just think about all the different configurations, different weight things that your model now has to try for every one layer, every one additional neuron that you're adding to it. And, you know, which is why small models, like if you have multiple small models, they might actually have a lower cost than just one huge models. And that's kind of the idea behind uh, taking a giant neural network, applying dropout to it, and, you know, then uh, applying dropout to it uh, stochastically to create multiple small children networks and then creating an ensemble of them. Uh, I'll link a vid an article in the description that shows how well this technique works and a video card should show up somewhere up here, which you might go into more details about this. So check those out if you're interested. So now, now is, so on this, uh, on all this pre-based knowledge, we get mixture of experts. And what mixture of experts does is, imagine we could divide a huge task into a whole bunch of really smaller tasks. And then we just trained small neural networks or other kinds of machine learning models or AIs to handle each of those tasks individually. And then, and then if we could create some kind of a network that can decide, okay, this kind of task we'll consider this expert, this kind of task we consider the other network, and we have a pooling parameter. Basically, we just combine something together. If we can have all these steps, again, we're assuming a lot here, but if we could do all of this, then theoretically we could get very good performance on r relatively low computational powers. Because again, you just need much smaller networks to deal with it and a pooling function. So here, like you can see this example. So we take an input data X and what we do is we feed it to our all our networks and we also feed it to a gating network. So each network will create some kind of an output, right? You can see this here. Then what our gating network does is it sees, okay, based on my input data X, I'm going to consider this part of my expert network one, this part of the output of my expert network one, this part of my network two, this part of my network three or whatever. And then we will, so the gate network will basically filter out each expert's uh, expertise, domain of expertise. And then it will combine, and then our pooling function will combine them to give us the final output. This might seem a little, hazy at first, but just assume this works and I'll get into an example in the next slide. But, you know, think about this. What happens now we can choose to, we can, since we are, have more detail, I can be like, okay, I need, I can improve this specific area. Maybe this one area isn't working very well because remember we've designed the network. So we are the ones, we can see what, uh, what aspect of our subtasks are not being done well. 
and this gives us a greater degree of control which you know you can't do with if you have just one neural network so let's take an example since I understand how hazy it can be so if we were to take an image and we were to say I want to write a neural network or I want to write some machine learning model that can take an image and then it can uh, give me a description of it, a three, four line description of what that image is doing. You know, you can see how this is a very complex task and it involves a lot of different things. You would need both computer vision and natural language to make these work. So how can we do this? So a, just off the top of our heads, like if it's just a high level description of this model, what we could do is we could split our image into the components of foreground, background, objects, and actions. So in this image, the foreground would be just what's it, what's up in front. So we see a road of some kind and a plate. Background seems to be some kind of a junkyard, but just based on scrap metals. And uh, then wh what are the objects? The objects in this case would be one like a it, uh, like a whole bunch of dogs. So each of these dogs would be a an object our plate would be an object then we see uh, some kind of a shelter a house a dog house that could be an object and finally the actions i guess one action we can describe here is the, the puppies are gathering around so you know just surrounding would be an action and then so you see that that's the first part where we're splitting our thing into different tasks and then we have different classifiers trained that are very good at specifying different things so one of our experts would just be very good at getting the foreground and forgetting everything else one would be with the background etc etc and then our getting function will kind of um, will be able to pick which expert we care about with which kind of output and then a generator would just synthesize all of these production predictions into one final description which is a bunch of dogs are gathering around a plate uh, in a junkyard slash abandoned road that that's just what i'm guessing is what we're looking at here and you see how uh, building on input from every individual smaller model we were able to create a bigger model so this kind of a approach obviously comes with a lot of considerations moe requires a lot of uh, you know domain knowledge because you want to set up your tasks in a way where they are actually meaningful you don't want to have like completely random tasks you, you can't just you can't just take an image and be like, I'm going to split it into four quadrants and try to do it that way because that wouldn't make sense, right? We'd like have half a dog and then our neural networks will be wondering what kind of uh, inputs are these. So any anytime we do start splitting our input data into different sub, uh, sub you know, categories and, uh, you know, try to featureize it, this requires a lot of domain input. Like, you know, it's similar to annotating label data where you need to have meaningful labels. If you just have random labels, it's not going to work as well. Similarly, a gating model has to work very, very well. So you see how the problem with mixture of experts essentially comes into the fact that we have a lot. Uh, just creating the, a good mixture of experts takes a lot of time and effort because even our gating expert needs to learn how to pick and choose the right uh, sub output like you know the slices of the output from different experts and pass those to a synthesizer pass those to a pooling algorithm which can then combine you know you don't always want to just weigh each expert e equally different kinds of tasks might have different preferences for experts so uh, we always want to keep that on the back of our mind that our experts don't want to be all equal so uh, you know again you'll have to play around a lot with your pooling algorithm to see what is your most optimal result and with that i'm going to, i'm just going to end the video here because i don't want this to get too long and clunky this video was meant to serve an introduction but you know moe was a very revolutionary technique when it came out uh, it's almost 30 years old now so it's 10 years older than i am when you think about it and it is however not super common these days there's one or two more papers that yeah, I used it very recently that uh, I, I mean I'll link them in the description below if, if you're interested in checking them out but the generally MOEs are not as common as they used to be but the point of this video was just to give you at least the philosophy of an MOE to help you understand the concepts behind it because this concept is actually going to be very as has been used in different kinds of ways in different kinds of uh, tasks like I mentioned CNNs before one of the reasons that CNNs are so powerful is they kind of have an inbuilt feature extraction into them where they're handling their models differently, uh, input data, and they're 
uh, extracting different features and they're working off that. And if you think about it, that's very similar to what an MOE does or bagging and un ensemble methods where you, you're aggregating uh, different kinds of uh, models and input uh, model predictions to get a final prediction. Uh, that that was that's definitely something that that has a lot in common with MOE. Even my deep fake detection idea, you can check out the playlist. I'll link it in the video cards up here. But my my the idea behind my deep fake detection work is very similar, where we're looking for artifacts and combining different n networks with different artifacts to create a very low cost, uh, lightweight uh, deep fake detection algorithm. And uh, you know. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, there are interesting offshoots like uh, hierarchical MOEs or um, what do you say, a sparse network MOE. And I'll link a paper going into one of them in the details in the description, so feel free to check it out. But overall, it's a very interesting idea. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit a like button and subscribe to my video if you haven't. Uh, I make videos like this all the time to help you understand machine learning and different kinds of um, techniques and tools that you can use in your own ML journeys. And this is just the final bit. All these uh, social media links will be in the description below. Uh, you know, if you're preparing for your coding interviews, uh, my Substack might be very helpful, which is coding interviews made simple. It's helped a lot of people out. If you, my video, my YouTube contains more machine learning, it's, uh, et cetera, related videos. If you're interested in uh, my detailed paper breakdowns, check out my medium. And you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to talk to me specific, especially, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram are very good pl platforms to just connect with me and we can talk about different ideas and concepts. And if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like me to make a video on different topics, let me know in the description below and I can get to them immediately. And lastly, if you want to support my work, make sure you use my Ravenhood referral link to get a free stock from the uh, platform you know it's completely free there's no there's no risk to you and we both get a free stock so if you can there's no reason to not do it you're just missing out on free money peace